Since I find so many lightning whelks down here, I thought I'd put a video together to tell you all about these fascinating critters while we're waiting for the beaches to open again. Welcome to another SWF Beach Life video. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and the bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. So today we're going to learn about these extraordinary creatures, the lightning whelk. But first, let's quickly review a bivalve and a gastropod. A gastropod is a mollusk such as a snail or a slug or a whelk. It only has one piece to its shell. A bivalve is a mollusk that has a compressed body enclosed within a hinged shell, such as oysters, clams, mussels, and scallops. In other words, the critter is enclosed by two halves of its shell. By valve, by two. The black part of the critter is the foot, and that oval shaped piece that will cover the snail's body, that's called the operculum. The lightning whelk is a gastropod mollusk and almost always left handed, also known as a sinistral shell. A sinistral shell means the shell is coiled in an anti clockwise direction. So when viewed from the front, the opening or the aperture appears on the left. The concept of a sinistral shell has fascinated countless shell collectors over the years, just as the majority of humans are right-handed, gastropod mollusks follow a similar trend and the left-handed shell is somewhat of an oddity. The largest sinistral mollusk is, you guessed it, the lightning whelk. Lightning whelk begin as hatchlings. They come from an egg casing that looks like this. There are tiny, thinner pieces in each of those layers of the egg casing and the little ones will manage to slither out of those little holes. The whelks that hatch will feed on the eggs that did not hatch. That can be considered either quite convenient or quite gross. I'll go ahead and let you be the judge. The little snails will continue to grow and their shells will grow with them. I've read quite a few differing statistics on how big these guys get, but they seem to max out somewhere around 15 to 16 inches long. Here's an example of one that's almost that big. This was the biggest one we've found so far. My husband needed two hands to safely handle this guy. I could not get a reliable number on how old these guys get. On one site, it says 10 to 20 years to reach about eight inches. So it's a bit of a mystery how long these critters can actually live. Lightning whelks are predatory and they eat bivalves. Remember, a bivalve is a critter that has two shells. The larger whelk will insert the edge of its shell inside the bivalve and use it like a crowbar. If it cannot pry the bivalve's shell open this way, it will grind the shell with its own shell until it creates a hole large enough to insert its radula or its toothed tongue. We had found this guy with a hole in its shell. I wonder if another lightning whelk did this? Anyway, the lightning whelk can smell its prey with special sensory organs inside its body and will almost completely bury itself searching for other food. We happen to find this lightning whelk eating a sunray venus clam. Native Americans harvested whelks for food, religious ceremonies, and practical tools. Many tribes believe that the left-handed spiral made the shell sacred, but whelks were also eaten and their shells used as scrapers, gouges, and even cups and bowls. There's a house on Fort Myers Beach called the Mound House. That's a whole nother video I have to bring to you, but if you'd like to see how shells were used by the Calusa Indians, make sure you stop over and check it out. I don't want to spoil the best part, but they have an underground exhibit where you can see layer upon layer upon layer of shells. This picture does it no justice. You should go check it out for yourself. Very cool. In 1987, the 70th Texas legislature designated the lightning whelk shell as the official Texas state shell. Kind of cool. Well, lightning whelks can be found all along the Gulf states. This is me down here. I find a whole bunch of them. Seeing as it is the Texas state shell, I'm assuming you can find quite a bit over here as well. 
And my understanding is that you can find them up in the Carolinas as well. So if you're in that area and you've ever found one, let me know. So now when I show you a lightning guac I've found, you'll know a whole lot more about them. Thank you as always for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe so you don't miss your weekly dose of beachy goodness.